Welcome back to Manifest Motorsports, you guys. It has been a while since I've seen you, and I am so happy to be back and coming at you with a brand new semi-project, I guess you can say. If you've been following me on social media, you know a little bit about this car. I've had it a little under a year or so. I have done work to it already, kind of bringing it back to its former glory, but there's still more work to be done. But I wanted to show it to you guys. We'll talk about what's next for it. And then of course, um, what needs to be done still. So um, let's go ahead and take a look. I present to you guys the 1988 Pontiac Fiero. So this is the 88 Formula Edition, if you hadn't seen that on the side, Pontiac Fiero. Now a little history about the Fiero. They actually started in 1983. And the design team had been pitching the idea for a compact mid-engine car for a long time. They wanted something that the everyday consumer could afford, but they hadn't had a lot of success in pitching it until Pontiac finally said, you know what, go ahead and do it. And so this had a very short shelf life. They actually went from about 1983 until about 1988. There were two separate motors in there. They had the inline four and then the V6. And this, of course, would be the V6, the 2.8 liter V6 pumping out 135 horsepower. And the idea behind this car was they saw the success of the Mustang 20 years prior, and they thought to themselves, if, if Ford can put out a car that is affordable sports car, we can also do the same thing. So they came up with this idea here, and unfortunately it just didn't catch on the way that they thought it would. So after five short years, unfortunately they stopped making these all together. So this is the actual last year for this specific uh, vehicle here. And the Formula Edition was the most rare of all of them. So this is a perfect example of a beautiful, beautiful way ahead of its time design for an American sports car. And they were actually one of the only American companies, and actually they were the only American company at that time to go mid-engine with any of their sports cars. And they were able to do it in mass production, which was the first time that it ever happened to any American car. So American, mid-engined, and they were able to mass produce it. And this thing is in really great shape. This one actually has 98,000 miles on it. That's it. So as you can see, we have the engine compartment for the formula. Again, this engine is a 2.8 liter V6. This specific one has the cold air intake with it. So it gives it more of a throaty sound, opens up the uh, throttle a little bit, if you will, get a little bit colder air in there and then ultimately help it breathe just a little bit better. And this specific engine had 135 horsepower and 160 foot-pounds of torque all delivered to those rear axles itself. And they gave you just a little storage compartment here. And I got some goodies stored in there right now, as you can see. But this is what the first example of an American mid-engine vehicle would look like. And boy, back in 88, did this thing look really good. So it wouldn't be an 80s car without the crank windows, right? So this thing, very retro, as you can see here, a two-seater, and this thing has 80s written all over it. Look at the steering wheel. The steering wheel is so, so retro. It's awesome. Now, the only complaint that I have with this vehicle, as you can see, it is an automatic, but... This is a car that was given to me, so I'm still able to enjoy it for exactly what it is, which is just a nice 80s styled, beautiful car itself. And as you can see, this one also has the manual sunroof. So really cool type features in this. And this thing really brings you back to the era when you're driving it. Really cool stuff. Now, one of the coolest parts of this car was actually the flip up headlight. So let's go ahead and take a look. Got your little toggle switch here. 
and take a look at this. For the time back then, if you were an 88 and you had one of these and you had the flip up headlights, you were a somebody at that time. Look at how cool those look. That is awesome. So being a 1988 with such low miles of 98,000, what really is there that needs to be done to this thing? And so I think you guys can see the very first issue that needs to be addressed here. This car came from Indiana, so it was definitely exposed to a lot of salt. These bodies were actually plastic and fiberglass bodies itself. So luckily you didn't have to worry about any sort of rust or corrosion or anything, but you definitely had to worry about the paint. So as you can see, the paint on this has seen better days itself. The wheels could use a little bit of restoring, but those basket weaves are really, really cool. So that's one issue that needs to be sorted out. Now, as far as other things that have been done, this specific one had an exhaust leak to it. So the exhaust manifold was, it's very difficult to find exhaust manifolds. So they actually found the leak and were able to weld it to make sure that that didn't leak anymore. A new alternator was put in this and then a new EGR system as well to help again that exhaust breathe just a little bit better. So some things have been done to it already, but as you can see, there's still a little bit more projects that need to be done to it. So what does this thing really drive like? Well, I've driven this thing a couple hundred miles since I've gotten it. And I mean, it drives like an 88. It, it feels exactly that retro type feel that you would be used to. I mean, all the trim in here is plastic to save money, right? So you get a lot of that feel with all the interior, but the actual drivability of the car is similar to that of something this old as well. The first thing that I'm noticing before I even shift it into gear is how spongy that brake pedal actually is. Now, can that sponge be cleared up? It certainly can be cleared up, but this is something that you would come to expect with an 88. The brakes are not refined like you would notice in a 2000 or a newer vehicle itself. They're very responsive. The technology is there back of it. This doesn't have anything like that. So the first thing that I'm noticing is the sponginess of the brakes. Now, I'm not sure how loud this compartment is for you, but it's pretty loud in here overall. It's actually quite a cool sound to have right behind your head just this v6 just pumping away behind you so really really cool sound and then drivability so what's this thing like right so as i drive this thing i mean you could hear that exhaust exhaust sounds great as i said that a check engine light came on but i'm not too worried about that that's probably the EGR or something like that, an exhaust leak, I wouldn't be surprised. But I mean, this thing, it's got a little bit of pickup to it. Um, what you would kind of expect from 135 horsepower, nothing that's gonna blow you away, nothing that's gonna throw you back in your seat. But with how light this car is, it's definitely noticeable. So again, this is a car that you would take around a track and have a lot of fun with it. So. This is definitely a car that I would consider a weekend cruising vehicle, something that you could take to a car show um, and, in, and just really enjoy on the weekends. So with that, everything about this car just screams 80s America, and I feel like I'm in Miami Vice right now, and it's a really cool feeling. Now, what does the future look like for this car? So I've already put a little bit of money into it, a little bit of work into it, and I really have gone back and forth with what I wanna to do to the car. I was thinking about selling it and potentially getting something else, but I'm not quite sure if I wanna do that, thinking about the history of this car and the fact that it is the last year and it is the last formula, which makes it even more rare because these had the upgraded brakes and then also the upgraded suspension as well. So it does make it a little more rare. It isn't manual, which does ding it a little bit, but this thing would look fantastic in anybody's garage. So right now, future plans definitely to get the paint brought up to where it needs to be. 
There's a slight little fuel issue that I'm running into. It doesn't happen all the time, um, but it feels like it's not always getting the amount of fuel it needs to be getting. So I'll have slight loss of power for a second or two, which needs to be sorted out. But unfortunately, it's one of those things that it doesn't happen all the time. It only happens intermittently. So I'm hoping to duplicate it again so I can track it down and get that issue fixed. But other than that, this thing is in fantastic condition. So that's it guys. I wanted to share this vehicle with you. Like I said, I've had it for a few months. I really don't drive it too often. It's been in the shop getting everything fixed and brought up to date to make sure that when I do drive it, it's nice and reliable and I don't have any sort of worry. So this car is absolutely awesome. I'm glad to have it in the garage right now. And it's really an homage to what 88 America was at that time. And just getting to step back in time and really enjoy this vehicle is something that I'm lucky to say. So if you guys did enjoy this video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. Other than that, you guys have a great rest of your day.